Welcome to our lecture online and here our next topic on the structures in atoms. We're going to look at the Heisenberg uncertainty principle for the Bohr atom. So since we now know that electrons are like small particles that behave more like waves than do particles, and we know that things, movement, velocities, energies, and so forth, electrons are quantized, they're now uh, limited by the fact that there's a certain amount of uncertainty in our ability to know how much energy they have, what the position of those electrons are, how fast they're moving, and so forth. So in this example, we're going to uh, show if the uncertainty in the velocity of the electron, now in the last video we saw that the electron had the speed of roughly 2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, about 2,000 kilometers per second. Let's say that we had a un certain uncertainty in that velocity in such a way that it was uh, 2 times 10 to the 5th meters per second, about 10%. So let's assume that we only knew the velocity of the electron in a Bohr atom, in a hydrogen atom, to about the, ne the nearest 10% of its true value. Then uh, what would be the uncertainty in the position of the electron? And so what we're doing here is trying to figure out how well we can place an electron in an orbit around an atom. So what we're trying to do here is trying to establish how well we can determine the position of an electron in an atom if there's a certain amount of uncertainty in its velocity. And of course, if we look at the uncertainty principle, we know that the product of the two uncertainties always have to be greater than some minimum number, which is Planck's constant divided by 2, divided by 2 pi, because by definition, h with a little line through it like that is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So this is really, if you want to think about it, this is really h divided by 4 pi. So as long as the product is greater than that, we can then determine what the uncertainty will be in either its position or its momentum. Of course, momentum is mass times velocity, which in other words, it means in its velocity. Now, sometimes you'll see this equation right here, not to be confused with this equation. This is only used when we use the standard deviations of the uncertainties. So sometimes you'll see that in, in a book and go, well, when do you divide by 2 and when, when don't you divide by 2? What's going on? Just realize when you use the absolute numbers, you use this equation. When you use the standard deviations of the number, you use that equation. All right, now let's go through with our example. So here we have an uncertainty in our velocity, which is about 10% of its calculated speed. What would then be the uncertainty in the finding the position of the electron? So we're going to find the delta x of this. So first we write delta p, the momentum, as m times v. So we end up with the uncertainty in the position times the uncertainty in the mass times the uncertainty in the velocity, because delta p is the same as this, has to be greater or equal to h bar divided by 2. Now, we're trying to find this, so we're going to move this to the other side, put it in the denominator, and we're going to write h bar as h over 2 pi. That becomes h over 4 pi now. So we have delta x is equal to, or I shouldn't say equal to, it has to be greater than or equal to h divided by, that's going to be 4 pi, and now we move the m and the delta v over here, m times delta v. So what that means now is that the uncertainty in the position is always going to be greater than or equal to this quantity right here. Let's calculate out and see what that really means. I guess before I calculate, I better put in values. So the uncertainty in the position is going to be greater than or equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by 4 pi divided by the mass, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and then we assume an uncertainty in its velocity by about 10% of its normal velocity, which is uh, 2 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. All right, let's find out what that is equal to. 6.626 e to the 34 minus, divided by 4, divided by pi, uh, divide by 9.1 e to the 31 minus, that's the mass, and divide by the uncertainty, 2 e to the fifth equals, and we get 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10, and that would be meters. So delta x is greater than or equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Well, what does that really mean? Well, let me draw a Bohr atom. So Bohr atom has a nucleus, this is the proton, and then has an electron in orbit around the nucleus. And so traditionally, we place the electron somewhere at a distance that is equal to the Bohr radius, which is equal to 0 0.053 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that's converted to nanometers. Let's now make this into nanometers. So this is delta x 
is equal to 0 0.29 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So now we have nanometers here, we have nanometers here. Now notice that this is a much bigger number than this. It's not quite 10 times as big, but it's at least about 5 times as big. That means the uncertainty in knowing the position of the electron in an atom, in a hydrogen atom, is about five times the radius, so a sphere made up of five times the radius of the actual atom. So if this is what we think, from a traditional point of view, where the electron has to be, right, around in an orbit about this far away from the nucleus, what we can say is that at any point in time, the position where the electron can be is somewhere in this huge volume where the radius is five times the actual radius of the atom. So in other words, what we're saying is we could find the electron over here, we could find it over there, maybe there, maybe there, maybe there, there. We really don't know where the electron is going to be. It can be anywhere in that region, much greater than the actual size of the atom itself. Wow, at first you would look at that and go, well, that's, that doesn't seem possible. It seems plausible. It just means that when we talk about very small things like electrons and small things like atoms, knowing precisely what's going on with them is very difficult to do because of its quantum mechanic action, because of things that happen with electrons. And so just the mere fact of positioning in a certain place gives us no visibility into how fast the electron may be moving in what direction, or knowing precisely what's happening with the, with the velocity and direction of the electron, we lose all understanding or ability to figure out where the position of the electron is, just like we illustrated here. Now what we'll see in a few more videos, I'm going to go and explain how we actually figured out the likelihood of where the electron can be, the probability of where the electron can be. And it turns out, as you might have guessed, the most probable location of the electron is right here in this location of the orbit. But we'll also see that there's a fair probability that the electron will be closer than that as much as almost right there at the nucleus as far as far away from the nucleus. So the existence of the electron, if you think about it, if you draw a straight line to the center of the atom, you can probably say that the probability of where the electron can be can probably be illustrated like this, where it's most likely to exist at the proper radius, but it can also exist closer and it can also exist farther away from that location. And that's also indicated by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So there you go, some insight into that, and in some future videos I will show you why we can say where we think the electron can be as far as the probability of its location. And that's how you do that.